Last week's video got a number of people pretty angry in the comments, because apparently Grandpa wanted to tell me to get off his lawn. But don't worry. This week, I'm going to tell you to get off mine and teach you why this bad boy actually might have been the best filter all along. Hello everyone, this is Bentley. Today in the comparison series of Your, Your Filter Sucks, Your Filter is Awesome, we are back with the humble under gravel filter. And now we get to go to the fun part. Why this might secretly be the best filtration method there is and always has been. It's no secret that under gravel filters have been around for a long time before the invention of the more modern powered filter with hang on backs, etc. This was the go to. Now, there are some other types of air power filtration that were used, such as breeder boxes, and we'll talk about those in a subsequent video. But this humble filter was probably the most common filtration method you would see a strong air pump. One of these, a good layer of gravel on top, would do your job. But why? Why is it, with all of our modern technology, canister filters, controllable pumps, sponge filters, all of these things that can create incredible surface area for your beneficial bacteria, is this thing still probably the best filter you can get a hold of? There's a number of reasons. Number one, this kind of is the best way to channel nature. And let me explain. A number of you were like losing your mind over the concept of your detritus getting under the gravel and have, or under the filter plate and having to clean that up. You don't necessarily need to. Yes, it is. Some of you were like, that's misinformation. It's on purpose. These videos are designed in a way that you hear things most commonly out there and why people will say that something is bad or good, including some of my own opinions. Here's the deal. As your detritus sinks into the gravel, all those beneficial bacteria convert that ammonia into nitrite, into nitrate. It breaks down, it becomes that finer, kind of siltier texture that you expect from your fish waste. You know, that true filter gravy. When it gets down in here, it becomes inert. It doesn't continuously produce more and more waste product. As that bacterial process happens, it becomes inert and it creates this incredible area for harboring more and more bacterial species, usually beneficial. Very rarely are there negative bacterias in that muck, right? Because all things that process and feed off of that mold are the bacteria that in nature do all of the work in our water systems. This is literally recreating that in a fashion that is more containable into our glass boxes like this bad boy right here. And that's just the first reason. You don't have to run this on just air. You can very easily take this spout off and instead And instead of running it through air with a little uplift tube like you would on a sponge filter or other types of filtration, you can hook a power head up to this thing. In fact, in the early 70s, it was very common to advertise for certain species of fish to do just that. There are a number of people, including someone in the comments last week who mentioned to me uh, over time that people who raise trout in educational environments that are eventually released back into the wild, this is literally the setup they use. They have a plate hooked to a power head and another plate hooked to a canister filter. Now, granted, that's going a little overboard and now we're combining all sorts of filtration methods. That's not necessarily the intent of this video series. But keep that in mind. You're not reliant purely on air. You can hook a power head up to this thing and all of a sudden, this bad boy's got all the suction you could ever need. And it's going to bring all that detritus, all that stuff down into this massive area for beneficial bacteria. Super efficient, super powerful, doing exactly what you need. 
And unlike a hang on back or a canister filter or even a sponge, this thing really doesn't clog. Now, yes, you might think, well, how do I clean it? Blah, blah, blah. Take this tube out, use a similar small siphon, plug it in. It'll suck everything right through here because you're using a significantly more powerful water force. Or when you are using something like a power head, it's not likely to keep a lot of that detritus down in here for long. It will sit in the gravel or if you're doing other things like an example would be a more common technique used in plenum systems designed to go toward anoxic filtration. You can put a layer on top of this, um, such as a, a water permeable cloths. There's stuff that's used specifically for uh, hydroponics and plant beds and stuff like that that will help hold in stuff and prevent those particles, those particulates, from getting down under the plate. You can use systems like that and again, let all that beneficial bacteria do its job, turn all that mold into a point of where it's inert, it no longer is harmful, and the most you're dealing with is nitrates. That leads us to the next important benefit. With this system, if you set it up correctly, such as using one of those fibrous matte materials, right? You can use the underside of this to put media. You can use something like the small Eheim bio ball kind of media, right? That little ceramic ball media. You can put a thin layer of that kind of media underneath this plate. And now all of a sudden you have even more room for beneficial bacteria to sit there and process the water in the area where the water is going to move the most after it goes through basically the giant pre-filter on top of the plate that is your gravel. And speaking of gravel, you don't necessarily have to have crazy big coarse gravel. You can. You could use an aqua soil. You could use more common gravel like this, where it's kind of medium, not super small, but also not huge and big. We're not talking like pea gravel like you put in your driveway. Or you could even go finer with something like this. This is Safety Zorb. It's a Montmorillonite clay that is very common in a number of different filtration methods or just as a kind of DIY substrate because of its ability to pull lots of things into it with its high cat ion exchange capacity. We strongly care about when it comes to planet tanks like this and trying to get extra nutrients down to the roots. But if you combine that with an undergravel filter plate, now you're pulling all of those nutrient creation sources in mulm and if you have water column ferts, water column ferts, down in through the gravel. And if you have a highly absorbent gravel like that or an aqua soil, it's gonna pull all those nutrients, all those things in there and make it available at the roots for plants. Oh yeah, plants. There used to be a rumor way back in the day that you can't use plants with an undergravel filter plate. If the roots get under here, it's game over. It's gonna ruin everything. Bull. You know what you find typically happens if you use the right plants, AKA root feeding plants with this? They grow amazingly because you're pulling all that nutrition constantly down into the soil. You're having all these bacteria present that are breaking it down, making their various offset nutrients, the things that they respire into the water column available to your plants right at the roots. So if you've got crypts, swords, aponagetans, anything like that, and you're using one of these bad boys, oh, 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 it's so good. You will see the best, most robust root systems you have ever seen using undergravel filtration and root feeding plants. And if you are worried about the roots getting down into the plate and causing some kind of problem, again, go back to one of those layers of cloth that you can use over the top that are water permeable, right? So there's um, all sorts of different products that are out there that are designed for like hydroponics and aquaponics systems that are designed to help roots bind to them, but not let them go through. Perfect. Layer that over the top, the water can still go through. It's gonna move into this lower system. You can have extra media down underneath. You can combine tons of these things into this humble 
open space, creating effectively a plenum, the open space underneath. Do not confuse plenum with anoxic, please. They are two different things. You can have a plenum without trying to create an anoxic environment, okay? Now you can, speaking of, slow down that water flow, keep it air driven, right? But instead of having this super tall pipe, you bring that thing down this way, so that instead the outlet is really low, you're minimizing the amount of uplift, slowing the amount of air to lower the flow that's coming through here, and you can try to create an anoxic plenum in that design. Now, most of the time when we're using undergravel filter plates like this, we're usually going for slightly higher flow because we want to pull in a lot and we might be relying on that as the only filtration source. You can do this with an anoxic system. You don't have to, uh, to be very, very clear. You absolutely do not have to. It will work either way. It's just a matter of what your personal choice is. For me, I prefer high levels of aerobic bacteria and plants. It's just a super good combination. I'm very familiar with it, et cetera, et cetera, but you can do either. And if you want plants, plants work well in an anoxic system as well, because naturally you're gonna bring all those things down to their roots, especially if you're using root feeding plants. You're gonna put all the nutrition that you want right at their primary feeding place. They're gonna have plenty of food. They're gonna be very happy. They're gonna grow well. This is a great way to do a strong planted tank with mostly root feeders. So similar to this tank here, right? We have a fairly thick substrate, mostly because I aquascaped it, it's got a big bank, but lots of crypts, right? Tons of crypts on this tank. And nymphaeas, lilies, they also build a really strong root structure and feed primarily at their roots. So we could use an under gravel system, do a tank very similar to this, power it off of the under gravel, still get some nice flow with a couple of plates, create a nice big open space underneath, let those plants do a lot of our work and use this as a part of our aerobic filtration system to break down ammonia and nitrite. The nice part about this is that effectively, because you have all that mulm and this very thick layer, typically, not always, but typically thick layer of gravel, you have a massive, massive area for beneficial bacteria to colonize, which means that the likelihood of you ever crashing your system is boop, tiny. Because you have this massive area that is basically a giant filter, you're turning all of your substrate into a giant filter, you have a huge area for a bacterial colony. So even if there is kind of a big spike, that bacterial colony is big enough that it can pretty quickly deal with some of the problems. So you really are unlikely to have a bacterial colony crash with this filter as long as you keep a significant amount of oxygen and you keep everything fairly regular, do your water changes. If you have plants, you might even not have to do very many of those and you're good to go. One of the absolute best fish keepers I know in one of his primary display tanks, I'm talking about Master Breeder Dean, has an undergravel filter. Now he's customized it. He's got like black PVC instead of these clear ones, so it hides into his black background. It's all slickly wired up, and it's using the undergravel filter system as a pre filter to a canister. Big brain, right? That's like going old school and yet high tech all at the same time. It is using all the benefits of an undergravel filtration system, using this big area to create a massive biologic filtration power, and yet using a power filter, and you could do it with just a simple power head, you don't have to go crazy and hook this thing up to a canister to make it one of the best filters out there. But even if you don't do it like that, even if you just keep it driven on air, and you go the high level where it's high airflow to create good water flow, give yourself some flow, highly oxygenated, all those things. Combine it with plants and you're going to cover all of your bases easily. This used to be the filtration system from like the 1920s up until the 70s. And there's a good reason why. Secretly, it's probably actually the best filter that's out there. Nature. It's pretty handy. There you go. Now, 
for all of you who are losing your minds in the comments, I welcome you to comment down below. I'm sure I missed something. There's 8,000 different ways that you think I could do this wrong or right or whatever, other benefits. I'm, co I'm covering the big ones, okay? We're not going to go into every detail. It's going to be a 45-minute video and people are going to fall asleep. <laughs> Let's keep this simple and understand the real key aspects as to why this filtration system was so successful for so long and learnings that we have in modern times where we can not necessarily use them just as a pre-filter and combine them with modern technology, but rather combine understanding of the science and what nature is doing with what we didn't know was working so well all along in this. Do you ever need to clean this thing out? Not really. You can basically leave these things running untouched for years. Years. Because the bacteria are going to do their job. It's pretty awesome, and it's why these are still very popular. You still see them regularly. And if you get a lot of your old-school fish people, they've been doing this thing since the 80s or whatever, or 30 years or whatever it might be, right? They've been doing it for years, and they're not changing because, you know what? Get off their lawn. They know what they're doing. That's right. All right. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Leave a comment down below. Did you learn something about the underground filter? Have you never tried it before? And now you're curious about how it's going to work. Are you like, yeah, stop talking about it. Put this thing in at work, blah, 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 blah. Uh, for those of you who were like previously going, ah, oh, this is something that's said by somebody who's never used one. Actually, I have used these before. And uh, I'm, I've actually been pondering whenever I can do my future fish room, running all my air power filtration on these instead of sponges. There might be one other contender, though. And uh, we're probably going to talk about that bad boy very soon. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. And stay awesome.